In this video, we'll use the WebSense Content Gateway internal root CA feature to generate a brand new root certificate. We'll actually import that to another WebSense Content Gateway uh, and then import it into the browser to solve the uh, problem you might be getting after enabling SSL decryption uh, on your content gateways. Uh, if your browsers are getting this error about problem with website secur security certificate, it's actually a problem with the WebSense Content Gateway uh, certificate and the trust it has with uh, your browser. Uh, so in, in this case, you have to kind of press this warning and you get to your site and you'll notice that the certificate has an error on it. And if you look at the certificate, you'll see that it's not Google's certificate. It's a certificate issued by your uh, WebSense Content Gateway and you can see that that's not trusted. Uh, it's not in your trusted root certification authority. So what we're going to do is generate one, distribute it to all your content gateways, uh, and then uh, put it, install it into this uh, desktop PC so we get rid of that error. Uh, and so what I'll do is I'll go ahead and close that. Uh, and what I have is, a, is two WebSense content gateways. I have one that's on a V5000 appliance, and then I have one that's uh, just built on a, on a Linux virtual machine. Well, we'll go ahead and it doesn't really matter which one we use. Uh, we'll, we'll go ahead and use the appliance. Uh, from the appliance manager, you are going to want to go to the content gateway manager. This configuration is done uh, in the content gateway manager and not the appliance manager. Once you're logged in, you're going to want to go to the configure tab, the SSL uh, pull down menu, and then the internal root CA. Inside here, we have all the options we're going to use today uh, on the website's content gateways. We have an import root CA feature, create, and backup, and we'll use all of these. Uh, what we're going to do is go ahead and start with a brand new uh, root CA, so we're going to go ahead and create one. And this is pretty self-explanatory, uh, but you're going to want to fill this out. This will be visible in the uh, certificate. I'm going to use my uh, lab environment. We'll call it BB Labs pro uh, Proxy. And again, all this will be visible in the certificate, which I'll show you later. We're going to make this uh, 20 years. And then we do need this passphrase, which is just a password. This will be required for importing, so you're going to want to make sure it's a password that you remember. Uh, in case you want to you know, install this on future WebSense content gateways, you'll need that password. Once we hit the Generate and Deploy, you'll see that we have success. You've created a new internal certificate authority. Restart is required. Uh, to restart, we can go ahead and go to My Proxy, Basic, and then click Restart. We'll go ahead and do that. Uh, in the meantime, now that that's restarting, we'll say that there's no proxy. Uh, I'll go ahead and change my proxy to the VM, and we'll use that for the remainder of this demo. And I'll go ahead and close that and reopen it. And you can see that we get the same error uh, on, the, on the other proxy as well, and that's to be expected at this point. So I'll go ahead and close this out uh, real quick. Uh, and uh, I'll go over to this other content gateway while that's rebooting, and I'll navigate to the same area. We're going to go to Configure, SSL, Internal Root CA, and it'll automatically be on the Import Root CA, which is actually the feature we want. But before we do that, I need to go actually back up the Root CA from the one we just created. So uh, this one has just finished its reboot. This is the one that we did the Create Root CA on. I'm going to go to the SSL pull-down, internal root CA, and I'm going to go ahead and back up the root CA that we just created and applied on this one. So that's as easy as just backing up both of these files. Depending on your browser, it'll probably download. It may or may not prompt you. Uh, so I'm going to clear that. They've downloaded, and I have them both here. Uh, these are things you probably don't want to save uh, in a special area because if you have additional uh, WebSense content gateways or you ever have to replace one, uh, you're most likely going to want to use your existing keys. So we have the PCA cert.cer and the PCA key.cer. So I'm pretty much done with this uh, appliance based content uh, gateway man or manager or content gateway. I'm going to go over to the uh, VM one and I'm basically just going to import this. So for the certificate, I'm going to do the PCA cert. For the key, I'm going to do the PCA key. Of course, you can rename those files if you want, if it's easier for you. Um, and we're going to use that passphrase that I used. I'm going to do the import root CA. It's going to say the CA was successfully imported, restart required. I'm going to go to basic. I'm going to go ahead and restart. And I'll come back as soon as this is done restarting in a minute. Okay, so the, uh, the VM proxy is rebooted. And again, now we have the same a certificate on both uh, proxies, so now I only need to worry about uh, getting one certificate down. And again, just to show, we're still going to get this certificate error because I haven't pushed the key down to the, the browser. 
Uh, so to do that, we'll go ahead and uh, close this again. Uh, we've already done it here with this file, but if, uh, if you're playing catch up, uh, you can go to the SSL internal root CA and do the backup. And all you need is the public CA key. That's what we're actually going to use. That's what needs to be fed down to the browser. And that can be our operating system or, and or browser. Um, and you're going to want to use probably a tool like SCCM or GPO or some other distribution method to get this down to your entire uh, you know, deployment or your entire enterprise uh, or AD structure. So, uh, but I'll go ahead and do it manually, which is, is what most people will do when they're initially testing. So I can go ahead and actually minimize this because there's nothing we need here. I have the cert here. If I double click on it uh, and open it, uh, Windows will give me the ability to install it. So we're going to go ahead and install it. I'm going to go ahead and install it through a local machine. That means any user of this machine uh, will be able to use this certificate. And it's important that you place this in the trusted root certification authorities. Uh, it needs to be there for this uh, this to work. So we press that, we press next, we do finish, import was successful. Uh, you can see the information here, I'll show that to you again in the browser. Now when I open up Internet Explorer and it goes to Google, you can see I don't get the prompt for the error, I, de I don't have anything in, in red. And one way I can tell if I'm actually decrypting uh, SSL traffic is I can click on the certificate and I can look at it. You can see that this is for Google, but it's issued by the proxy. See the certification path. It no longer has the warning on it. That's because this is in the trusted root certification authorities now. You can see all the details, expiration date, all the stuff that we provided uh, there. Uh, and that's pretty much it. Once you've done that uh, to your machines, you won't get that error message anymore. Uh, it is worth noting that there is uh, SSL uh, bypass capability, <coughs> excuse me, which allows you to uh, specify certain types of sites, like in this case, banking sites that actually will not decrypt. So when you actually look at their certification, uh, or sorry, their certificate, you'll see that it is not the BB Labs proxy one, but in this case, it's VeriSign one, which is of course trusted uh, by the operating system. So that's a good way that you can use to, to tell what is and isn't being decrypted. Uh, but again, just make sure that you, you store these files so you can import them into other devices later. And if you are using the hybrid system, you will need to get the WebSense public uh, hybrid uh, key and install it or import it similarly to how you did that. Uh, but I hope this uh, video was helpful for you.